Hi and thanks for joining me today. This is Zoe from MakeItCrafty.com and today I'll be colouring Henry Grumpy from the new Halloween 2014 collection. I share a few techniques such as smooth blending with tip to tip, flicking and marker control, creating a rim light and casting a shadow. If you would like to colour along with me, grab your favourite blending shades and let's start colouring. Hi everyone, I'm going to be colouring Henry here and I thought it would be fun to colour him in blue. My light source is going to come from the top left, so I'm going to bring, uh, make all of the left hand side will be light. And so the dark shading area to help form the shape of him will come on the right hand side and um, we'll work up towards the highlight which will be up this way. To begin with I'm going to lay down my V000. The reason that I do this first is because I want to wet the surface of the paper before I put my dark colour down. And I find that this gives me more time to blend the dark colour before it soaks into the paper. So I'm just going to come in with my BO5 and I'm just turning the paper so that I can have more control over my marker whilst I lay it down. And you'll see that rather than doing a steady line like this. I'm doing a little flicks because I just want to get that colour onto the paper and if I do a steady line it's a lot harder to control the marker and I usually press harder than I would and what can happen is that it becomes harder to blend the edge of that line. So if you put a little bit of ink just by just touching the paper you'll find that it's easier to blend it out with your next shade. So I'm going to come in with BO2. I'm just going to go over that dark area and start to blend that edge towards my highlight. Now if you find that the colour that you, the two shades that you have chosen is too, uh, there's too much of a difference between each shade and it's hard to blend and get a really nice look, what you can do is called tip to tip. And so that's where you take your dark colour and you take a lighter colour or lighter shade. So I've got my lighter shade here and my darker shade which is BO5. I'm going to go tip to tip and I'm going to, using my lighter shade, I'm going to take some of the ink off the darker marker. And then you can see it on the nib there how it's darker. I take that dark section and I start in the dark area and flick towards my highlight. And this is essentially rubbing off that dark ink and mixing it with the lighter colour as it goes. So I'm going to turn the nib over to the light side and just blend that edge out further. And now, because I don't need the, any more of that dark, I'm just going to wipe the excess off on my scratch paper. So coming back with my B000, I want to extend my dark area. So I'm going to come up the side here and just lay down some, some ink so that it's wet. And then I'm going to come in with my B05. Like so. I'm also going to take it under the tummy here. And now I'm going to come in with my BO2 and extend that. The faster you can work, if you work in small areas, you'll find it's easier to get a nice smooth blend and transition between the shades. It also helps to have your colours closer together. And when I mean colours closer together, I'm talking about the last number. With a BO5, jumping to a BO2, what can happen is that there's too much of a gap there. So a BO4 would probably help or a BO3. Um, but that's why we do the tip to tip. 
to really help get that smooth, smooth blend. And some different markers, some different colors will be different. So you just need to experiment and you don't have to use the same family. Okay, so now we're going to move to B01 and I'm going to extend that further. And then I'm going to just do the top of that leg with B triple O. Now you might be wondering why have I left that line around the edge here? And the reason I've done that is because he's, he's quite a simple character and I thought it would be fun to give him a little bit more dimension. And this here is called a rim light. And what that means is that the light that's coming from the top left comes down and it hits the ground or it hits the background or it hits some sort of object and then it bounces that light back and it sort of so it's like it curves around the object and then bounces back um, giving a uh, lighting up the side of the um, character in this case so a great thing about this is that if if you're having some fun with your Christmas characters for example and maybe one has a lantern or something like that you can actually color this rim light as a yellow and give it a glowing effect um, it's quite it's quite a fun little technique and this might be something that I'll do in a future video but what I've done here now I've just colored over that rim light with a BO2 and the reason that I'm using a blue is because I am imagining that I'm that is in the sun and so therefore it's going to be a white sort of light and so it's only going to reflect the same color as what he is. Okay so I'm going to come in with B01 and I just want to smooth that out and bring that up here. I'm going to do a rim light under here just smoothing all this out. Okay, so let's do his other leg. I'll turn him back around. Now, you're noticing probably that I'm just doing all this turning around. And the reason that I do that is because of when I am flicking, if I'm trying to get into a detailed area, I find that I have more control over my nib when I am flicking towards myself. I can get really, really fine detail. But if I'm working on a bigger area such as his tummy, I can find it easier to flick away from myself because I can put more of that nib down. I can really get the side of it. And the same is coming forward. But you'll notice that when, um, sometimes you might find that, well, everyone's different. So you might find that you have more control when you're flicking up. So just have a bit of a practice. And to actually get more control of your nib, the best thing that you can do is when you're on the telephone or you're doing something mundane or you're doodling, grab your marker and sit there with a bit of scrap paper and just, just flick. See how thin you can go. How light can you touch that paper? Okay, so let's continue. So we're gonna do this leg here. So I've got B01 here, this will do. I'm just going to wet that paper again. Like so. I'm going to come in with my BO5. Just going to feather that edge there so that I don't have a harsh line. Then I'm going to come in with my B02. And then I'm going to come in with my B01.
And I'm going to go over the rim, light with the BO one. Now, if you use a color that you think you put the over the rim light and it looks way too light, you can just come in with your darker color. Like I'm going to come in just at the top here with my BO2 and just make that a bit darker. Like so. Now let's come in with B triple zero and do the top of his leg here. And we'll also take up the light of his chest. Now because I'm flicking, because I'm trying to blend that into my darker color here, I'm actually flicking it back so that I'm moving some of that darker color down as I flick, just like that. Now let's do his, his arm over here. So I've got B triple zero. So I'm just going to wet the paper again. It's the same as every little section as you go. You just wet your paper, then bring in your dark color and start pushing that color. So I'm gonna do BO5. Then I'm going to come in with BO2. Now also try to go in the direction of the shape that I'm trying to portray. So as well as colouring towards the light, I want to try and keep that shape looking round. So I've put the line under there to make it give you that round appearance. Come in with BO1. And I'm going to do the rim light with BO2 just on the side over here, just a little bit there. And then I'm going to bring that up here. Then I'm going to switch to, just going to make sure that that's all nicely blended. And then I'm going to switch to B01 to do the rim light over here. Like so. And then I'm going to bring in B00 to finish that off. And then we're going to do his tail and his other hand. Come in with B05. Like so, then come in with BO2. I want to make sure that his tail looks nice and smooth, so I'm going to color him lengthways. And then finally, I'm going to come in with B triple zero. Just like so. Okay, so let's work on his head now. And I'm going to give him a bit of a, a lip. So 
So I'm going to colour around that like so and slowly build up those colours. I don't want his head to get too dark so I need to be careful that I don't put too much colour down. But at the moment I'm just starting with B triple O. Now the other good thing about starting with a light colour is you can get an idea of where your shadows are going to be before you put too much ink down. So you can always change your mind. It's a lot easier to add more colour than it is to take it away. So I'm coming in with BO5. I'm just going to follow that line down and then just feather it out as I go so that I don't get that harsh line. And then I'm going to flick it down under here. A little bit under his mouth. I need some on top of his mouth here so that I can get the the effect that I'm looking for. Okay, now before that gets too dry, I'm going to come in with my BO2 and blend that towards our highlight. We might have to do some tip to tip work here because we're working on such a big area. Okay, I'm going to do some of his ear. I'm actually just using BO2 for the dark area on that. Then when you're working around things like eyes or other little objects, just quickly go around it and then flick towards your highlight so that you don't get that round line. I do find that sometimes working on these little characters that are simple and you're trying to get a beautiful smooth gradient can be harder than doing something like pleats for example where you can be a little bit rougher with your finish. I'm coming in with BO1 so just, just keep on going backwards and forth between your shades and you'll find that uh, it'll eventually have a nice smooth blend. You don't add too much ink, you've got more time to play with your paper before it becomes oversaturated. Now I am going to have to do some tip to tip in that little area over there. It's not too happy with the way that his mouth is turning out there. So I'm just going to get my BO5 and my BO1 and I'm again going to take some ink and I'm going to go from the top here and I'm going to flick it towards the area that I want and see how it's quite dark at the moment because that's because most of that color is on the nib that's why you always start where you want your um, darker area to be if you started here you're going to have a great big blotch that you need to try and get rid of So once you're finished, just take that off and we're going to just blend that rest of that out. Like so. And that looks a lot better. Happier with that. Okay, so now we're going to do his fix up his mouth under here. Just want to bring that across. I want a little bit of darkness. I'm just taking one sort of flick so that I can get just a little bit of darkness there without getting too much ink on my uh, lighter mark. I'm just going to scrub it off to make sure it's nice and clean before I cap it. Now I'm going to come in with my B triple O. I'm going to 
begin by flicking back in the direction of my color at the top just to get that smooth transition between the shades what to do his ear nearly forgot his ear there and I'm going to just color the top of his lip here to get that nice sort of pouting lip look and then come in with BO2 and just fix up this ear over here and it might need a little bit of dark so I'm just going to come in with BO5 just on the side there like so blend that out with BO1 I don't want it to get too dark, just enough of that colour. And then come in with B triple O to finish that off. Okay, so now we've got the rim light to go, and I think I'm going to try B01, but it might not be dark enough, so we'll, it'll be good for here. We'll just go B01 around here. And that's not too bad. I might need BO2 on this side. So I'm going to just put a little bit of BO2 down here. It's a little bit better. And then I'm going to do B triple O on his ears here because we only used BO2 as our dark colour. So you want to go quite a bit, a few shades lighter than your darker color around the rim. Okay, so what's left is that his head would be casting a shadow on his neck here. So the light isn't gonna be bouncing directly onto his neck. So I'm gonna start with VO2 and I'm just gonna, I don't wanna go over my rim light here. I want that to help it pop. So I'm just gonna do a line under that like so. And then I'm going to imagine how the light would be casting a shadow. So I'm just going to have a guess that it's probably around about that. Then I want to make that stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to come in with my BO5. And I'm just going to put that under here. Like that. And smooth that out with BO2. Just like that. That looks better. Okay. Now, he wouldn't be a monster without some freckles. So let's add some spots. I'm using B18. And I'm not going to put them everywhere. I'm just going to put a few here and there into the dark areas. And keep them at different types of dots. So you want some little ones and some big ones. Just like that. Just a few. Doesn't have to cover him with them. Put a few on his tail. Put a few under his his tummy, maybe a couple up on his arm here. Then he's going to have some on his, the tips of his ears. And of course he's going to need to have some freckles around where his nose would be. Maybe a couple on his chin, hey? There we go. That looks pretty cute. All right, so what else does he need? He needs to have his horns colored in. So I'm gonna use a YR24 just to add the shading side. And then Y17.
And then I'm going to use Y13. And then we're going to colour his eyes and I've chosen to do them in a C9. And I'm just going to colour them in whole. But you could leave a white dot or you could add a white dot later. And the last thing that we need to do is we need to cast a shadow because at the moment he's just sort of sitting in thin air. So let's ground him. And the way to do, well, the way that I like to do this is we've got the light source coming from the top left here. And as it hits, as it hits him, he's going to be blocking some of the light onto the ground here. And he's not going to be blocking the light over here because the light is going to hit it. He's going to be blocking it in this direction here. So his tail is going to be casting a shadow and his body is going to be casting a shadow. Rather than doing it, uh, rather than uh, just sort of just doing a quick ground like that, I tend to turn my subject and start flicking in the direction that I think is casting the shadow. So I'm going to turn him like this and start flicking. I'm using C3 here. I'm going to start flicking it out to create my cast shadow. Kind of just do a little bit this way. To help even up that ground. Okay, so now I'm going to use a darker colour, C5, to help add some extra depth to that shadow. Imagine that that's his tail casting a shadow there. Here's his feet casting a shadow. And what you can also do is you can go, well, his body is going to be casting a bit of a shadow. So we can just bring it down a little bit like that. Imagining that his body is casting a bit of that shadow. And you're leaving your white spot a white space between here and here because that's his tail casting a shadow and here is his body casting a bit of a shadow. And that helps to create a little bit more interest rather than just doing a flat ground across. So example, I've got a sample that I was playing with earlier. If I just coloured, I'm going to show you the difference. If I just coloured a ground like so, not only do you get some terrible looking ends, but this doesn't look as interesting. Even if I came in with a darker color around here, it doesn't look quite as interesting as the ground that I've created there. Well, that's the end of today's coloring video. The card I made for Henry is around 4 inches wide by 5.5 inches tall. I matted the image with yellow and popped it up with 3D tape on a black card. I really like how adding a border with white space helps to make your image stand out. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks so much for watching.